Hello everybody, my name is Oliver Steinhauser and I am CTO at From Dual, which is a small MariaDB and MySQL consulting company. In this presentation, I will talk to you about MariaDB Galera cluster and master slave replication. So, why mixing? Galera Write Set Replication is one side and MariaDB Replication is the other side. So maybe you have heard about both technologies. So why should we mix both? Uh, what we hear very often with customers is that Galera Cluster, meaning Write Set Replication, is so cool. Why should we bother with this old master slave setup crap? The reason for this is because both technologies have their strengths and weaknesses. They have their advantages and disadvantages. And when we bring together both technologies, when we can combine them, maybe we can use the advantages and reduce the disadvantages of both. So the idea is use the best of both worlds. Uh, before we start, let's have a look on the difference of both technologies. On the left side I have Galera right side replication and more or less in the same order I have on the right side the features or differences in MariaDB replication. So let's have a look first on Galera what are the features or the strengths of right side replication. So Galera marketing claims it's a true multi-master cluster so you can write to any node. They also say it's an active active cluster you can write to any node. They say it's a synchronous replication. If you look a little bit closer, you will see that it is a virtual synchronous replication. Uh, other people call that semi-synchronous replication. Galera is a tightly coupled cluster. So you have the same state on all the nodes. No diverged data on any node is allowed, but you can have back coupling because of this and delays are possible. At least delays for writes. Galera has a quite good implementation of multi-threaded replication, so throughput is quite okay. No master slave failover or virtual IP is needed. So that is at least what marketing claims. In reality, yeah, that's true, but most users uh, have some kind of load balancer in front of a Galera cluster. So the load balancer does the master slave failover or the failover in general. Galera has or is a hot standby, so minimal downtime during failover. That's totally true. In reality, it is within one or two seconds until you have failed over to the other node, if you configure it correctly. Uh, node provisioning is done automatically. Node provisioning and joining, that's perfectly fine and true. It supports InnoDB only. This is not only an advantage, this can be a disadvantage. It's transparent to application, so marketing says there is no or minimal changes necessary if you want to go to Galera. No, re no need for read-write splitting. Uh, many customers uh, do that because of cluster conflicts, so this is just in theory. It's very easy to use, that's perfectly true, until you have a problem. And then most of the customers are not so comfortable anymore with Galera cluster. It's very, very easy to, to deploy. That's perfectly true, fully agree with that. I say sometimes it's too easy to deploy. Marketing also claims there is no replication lag. So I'm just asking back, what about flow control? What about back coupling? Is this not some kind of replication lagging? 
grid scalability you can also do with Galera cluster. So I have all these features from the website indicated just down here. On the other side, let's have a look on MariaDB replication. So MariaDB replication is a master-slave cluster. You write to one node and read from many other nodes. Write to several masters is possible, but we do not recommend it. It's quite complicated. You have to know exactly what you're doing. Master-slave replication is asynchronous replication. The semi-synchronous replication is possible as well. Uh, it's implemented either as a plugin or with more recent re uh, releases, it's a built-in. Master-slave replication, in contrary to Galera cluster, is a loosely coupled system. So you can easily have different states on any node. Data divergence is possible and you have no back coupling, which can be a huge advantage. Multi-threaded slave is also available. I have heard some rumors that it's not as efficient as on Galera cluster. I didn't prove it myself. Failover is done via scripts and the virtual IP, or you can also do it in a load balancer. The slave becomes the new master in case of a failover, so a short downtime is possible. If you do it well, it's only slightly longer. It will only take slightly longer than in a Galera cluster. Uh, node provisioning is not done automatically. So what Galera is doing with the SST, you have to do it yourself, but it's quite easy scriptable. So you can you do your SST on the master-slave replication yourself. Master-slave replication supports nearly all storage engines, so it's not limited to InnoDB only. Somebody needs to do the read-write split, if you really need that. Most of the users don't need read-write splitting. It's quite easy to use, also when you have a problem. So from my experience, users come better out of a problem with the master-slave replication than they come with the Galera cluster. It's quite easy to deploy, a little bit more difficult than Galera cluster, but experienced administrators can easily handle that. Slave, la slave lagging is possible, but we don't have back coupling, which is an advantage on one side, but can de be a disadvantage as well. And read scalability is quite easily doable with master slave replication, maybe even better doable than with Galera cluster. So advantages, reality check, Galera on the left, MariaDB master slave on the right, Galera is an active-active multi-master cluster, automatic failover is possible, failover within second, you have no single point of failure, synchronous replication, no loss transaction, and Galera is very strict. So these are the advantages of Galera. What are the advantages on MariaDB replication? Stopping a slave is possible. Upgrades, running in different versions, is not a problem with master-slave replication. You can artificially delay some nodes. Async replication. No back coupling from slave to the master, so whatever you do on the slave, it will not affect the master. You can have different storage engines on the slave. It's less strict than in Galera cluster, so that means you can do more dirty things than in a Galera cluster. And master slave replication copes very well with unstable networks compared to Galera. So now we know the strengths of both systems. What are the, feature, uh, the reasons to combine them? So one of the te technologies does not provide the same features than the other, so we should combine these technologies. So if you need stopping a node, stopping a slave for some reason, there is no back coupling from the slave to the master, so that could be a good idea to uh, combine these technologies. If you have back coupling issues because of flow control, 
For example, your backup or your reporting is affecting the write throughput, then you can think about combining it. If you want to artificially delay the replication, then maybe you should think about combining them. If you need or want to filter on schema or table level, this can be done with master-slave replication only. If you have different table definitions on master and slave, we are talking also about attribute promotion demotion in replication, you need master slave replication for this. This. If you want to change the storage engine, for example, if you want to use the MariaDB column store, uh, this you cannot do in Galera cluster. So it would be a good idea to replicate from a Galera cluster into a MariaDB column store. If you want to have read-only nodes, uh, to be honest, I did not try if this is possible with the Galera cluster, but I'm sure it works for master-slave replication. We tried that out. Would be another reason. Upgrade path and fail back over many releases. This is where master-slave replication is much better than Galera. Or if you have two data centers with high latency or unstable network in between, uh, would be another reason to com combine both technologies. So let's have a look at different use cases. Use case number one, if you have to artificially delay replication, uh, this can be done easily with a Galera cl cluster in combination with a normal MariaDB slave. So the idea is your Galera cluster is writing all the changes in the binary log, your slave reads the binary logs and applies all the changes with some delay. Uh, here we have two use cases. Uh, a stock trading, there is a professional version versus the free version. Free version has 50 minutes delay to the professional version. So all the professional traders, dealers have real-time data, all the others 15 minutes delay. Or for preventing logical errors, Oops queries, how we call them sometimes. You can delay a slave for some hours. So if a bad query happens here, it will not be written to your slave. So you have up, this, up to this amount of time to stop the slave. Scroll forward up to the bad query and then switch to the slave. Another use case we have sometimes with customers is upgrade. Especially upgrading when you want to skip or when you have to upgrade many releases. So for, for one proof of concept we had here with a customer, he was still running on MariaDB 5.5. And he wants to go to, to the newest MariaDB 10.5. And he was asking us how should we do that with minimal downtime. So if you look at the MariaDB upgrade path uh, from 5.5, where still MariaDB version 2 versus MariaDB or Galera version 2 versus Galera version 3 was in discussion, it's possible or probably possible to upgrade in one step to MariaDB 10.3. And then upgrading from MariaDB 10.3, you switch Galera protocol from version 3 to version 4, we are not so sure if it's possible to go directly to 10.5 or you have to go by 10.4. So if you want to do that, you have to do it in many steps, which is very time consuming. So what we suggested and implemented to the customer in this case is the following. We have one Galera cluster with the old release, another Galera cluster with the new release, and we replicate over master-slave replication. So that means we're running here, here we have the new version, and we are up to date. If you're sure that this works, we, sw we switch production to this new cluster and can run here. If we see later on that the new version, for some reason, is not working as the customer expects, we can easily switch back to the old cluster because all the statements which are written to the new cluster are replicated automatically back to the old cluster. So we have quite good uh, experience, made experience with this kind of upgrades because we are very flexible switching back to the old release. Use case number three 
is uh, for customers which have two data centers with high latency or unstable network in between. So if you are two data centers close together and the network between the two data centers is stable, you don't have to take care about that. But if you do two data centers are far apart or the network in between is really lousy, you maybe will not become very, very happy with the Galera network crossing the two data centers. Another problem here with two data centers is if you have uh, three nodes here and three nodes there, you have an even number of nodes and you know that this is a rule for, uh, this is a rule that it is bad for a Galera cluster. So what did we suggest in this case to the customer? We told them, okay, if possible, set up one cluster in one data center, another cluster in the other data center, and join them together through master-slave replication. So if this is the active data center, they will replicate everything to the passive data center. And then when they switch to the passive data center, everything is replicated to the active data center. So you can easily switch between these two data centers. But in this situation, typically you run it in an active-passive mode, not in an active-active mode. Theoretically, you can do it active-active, but we do not rec recommend that. So what are the challenges setting up such a system? Uh, first challenge is you have to enable binary logs and always in Galera cluster running with log slave updates equals on. So that's peanuts. So what happens in case of an IST, incremental state transfer? Uh, that's also an easy case. A binary logs will be continued, so no problem. The problem comes up when you experience an SST, and snapshot state transfer, because in this situation, the binary logs are lost. They will be deleted and the new cluster will start again from binary log number one. That means after an SST of your binary log provider, you have to reset up or fix your slave cluster or your slave. So switching the binary log channel is a huge challenge. So what do I mean with switching binary log channel? Um, to make it a little bit easier for explaining it, I have just one node uh, as a slave here, but it works exactly the same with a full Galera cluster. So what do I mean with switching binary log channel? You have your cluster, it's writing binary log. This slave here is attached to this node number three. So this is channel number one where all the binary logs are shipped to the slave. So if number, uh, slave num master number three, node number three, gets an SST, this channel is broken. The slave is still there, but he cannot receive any binary locks anymore. You see that also on the slave, it shows slave status. Yeah, it's stuck at uh, binary lock number five at some position and say, I cannot find the next binary lock file anymore. So what you have to do is, you have to switch to another Galera node and replicate everything from there. So, how do we do that? So, on the other node, node number one, there is a completely different binary log with a completely different position. So, how should we do that? So, channel failover with classical means is done over binary log file and binary log position. But how? So first of all, in the relay log of the slave, you have to search for the last committed transaction. So show slave status, you get the binary logs and the relay logs. We show relay log events in, you can show the last relay log and all the transaction in, uh, or, or alternatively with the MariaDB bin log on the relay logs of the slave. And then we have to search the equivalent transaction on the new master with show binary log events in or with MariaDB bin log on the bin logs. And then we have to point the slave to the new master with the right binary log file and the binary log position. So this is quite difficult to automatize. I did not try it and it causes quite some work. So searching last transaction on the slave. Show slave status, we, give, uh, we get a relay log 
uh, we do show relay log events. We see here last transaction was 16. We search the same transaction on the new master on channel 2. We see here the last transaction is 16. Then here the binary log switch. So this will be the new entry point. And then on the slave we have to, to do to change master 2 to this binary log at this position and then start slave again. So you did the channel failover. Now we have channel failover with global transaction ID. This is quite modern technology. Uh, this is logical replication and this works since MariaDB 10.5. So we have to do some preparation. Right set GTID mode has to be enabled on all, on, uh, has to be enabled. Right set GTID domain ID needs to be the same on all the nodes in one cluster but different between two clusters. And GTID domain ID should be different on all the nodes and should be different to right set GTID domain ID. So how does the channel failover works here with GTID? You do the stop slave, you say change master to new master and master use GTID slave position, you do the start slave. So with GTID this becomes much easier. If you are interested how to read a little bit more in detail, I have listed all the interesting literature to this topic. I'm finishing now with my presentation. If you have any questions, you can ask them now, or I'm a little bit around here in the talk for the next few minutes, and we can have some personal talks. Thank you very much.